Well, hey there, guys. Uh, a couple of people were interested in this sort of homemade arcade machine that I built for my subscriber celebration thing. So I thought I'd uh, basically explain to you exactly what it was and how it works. First, I'm going to tell you that everything um, basically that you see here, let me try and sorry, move the camera a bit, uh, cost me around about 700 RMB in total. So that includes basically two controllers, right? Uh, all the buttons and of course all the hardware that goes along with it. And uh, we're going to pop her open so you can actually see, you know, what's going on inside. All right, first, I've taken it apart so you, can, you guys can actually see this, but this is the sort of main component, I'd say. It is a multi-game jammer board. This one in particular is called a, I'll show you the, the outer casing, it's called a Pandora's Box 3, okay. Wait, where is it? There we go. Sorry, I'm using a, a very uh, sort of uh, narrow angle, angle lens here. Okay, it's called Pandora's Box 3, and what it is is it's been developed in China, and all the arcade machines here run on these things. It's basically just a, a well, a mini computer board that has been designed to emulate and run arcade games. So it has a small SD card here, but there are no games on there. That's actually just uh, for saving your settings, and the bootstrap, I believe, is there. But it's got Flash here, and all the um, games are stored on here. There are 520 arcade games, and they're all pretty much um, the original you know, ROMs that you would find in the arcade, so they are proper arcade games. And the nice thing is that it has a VGA out. Um, it also has the normal standard um, jammer connection here. As anyone who's familiar with arcade systems knows about this, this uh, connection, it stands for Japanese Arcade uh, Machine, uh, I can't exactly remember, whatever it means. You basically get a jammer connector and, uh, well, let me, let me change the lenses around so we can get a closer look at everything inside. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to put this back together. Here's that uh, jammer board I was telling you about. I'm going to put it back into its um, little enclosure. Then I can show it to you maybe a little better. So, give me a second now while I put this all back together. Okay, so this is actually what the um, Pandora's Box 3 S looks like. Now, there are different versions. There is an English version. This one is unfortunately all in Chinese, but my Chinese understanding is good enough. I can read and understand the menus, and so I thought there's no point in getting the English version since all the games are the same. They're all the original English and Japanese games, although there are a couple of uh, games which have uh, sort of Chinese hacked into the ROMs, but, you know, they're, they're added on as extras, so you still have all the originals. And... Um, you know, I, like I said, I understand Chinese well enough, so the English one costs about 100 RMB more. These are really cheap, by the way, about between two and uh, 300 RMB just for this, this little board thing, this computer thing. It's quite cute. It looks like a, an old Neo Geo MVS cartridge or something. Anyway, let me explain to you. This is the standard jammer connection over here. So this also bought, you see this whole set of wires? Uh, you can buy that uh, as well on Taobao, just like this. Taobao is the uh, Chinese eBay, basically. And uh, this is actually what, like, it's a, an arcade cabinet standard. So you could actually plug a proper arcade board into here, something out of a, a Neo Geo or, a, you know, whatever kind of arcade cabinet will actually fit this, and then all your controls will work. Because this is an interface for everything. Your power, your video, your controls, they all go through here and your audio as well. Anyway, so it's very simple how it works. It just, uh, you know, plugs in like this, you know, and there we go, You're ready to rock. Now, um, I've just attached it with two self-tapping screws in here. So let me get them in so that you can see properly how uh, it's laid out. <clears throat> okay, so there it is. It's in there. It's all secure. It's not going to move anywhere. And the jammer connector is then connected up to all the controls. These are really, really simple to do. I mean, here you can see here are the buttons. 
These are like your start buttons. This is your insert coin button. You can actually change that with a, a proper coin slot, which you can buy from the same shop on Taobao, which is quite nice if you wanted to build a more authentic cabinet. So anyway, all of these, as you can see, it's really interesting. They're proper, you know, micro switch joysticks and buttons. Very easy to hook up, as you can see. You know, you've just got your your negative lead and then your positive lead on all of them. It's really, really simple to do. This is your power supply. They're very cheap as well. It's about 30 RMB. It's really nothing. And a little, little extra here, all right, so that if you want to run a monitor, because I'm sure you noticed it's VGA out, so you can basically take any standard VGA monitor, you can power it from this box, and then also plug the VGA into it, and you've got a fully working system because the speaker is actually in here, so your sound is coming from here. I did drill a hole underneath here so that the sound can actually, you know, go out. And this, this cabinet kind of works as a, a speaker box, so it, it's pretty cool. It uh, gives out quite a, a reasonable bass, actually. So uh, that's another little extra touch. But that's really it. It's simple. It's really, really simple. I've actually ordered different joysticks now. Um, specifically for fighting games because it turns out um, you know my friends and I really enjoy you know sea milk and, and beard and that lot we really enjoy playing things like the last blade 2 um, those SNK fighting games so we're going to replace them with sort of uh, special fighting joysticks and I've ordered all sorts of different colored buttons so that I can replace these um, I do actually have over here came, came with everything I ordered a couple of spare buttons as you can see, so I've got a few replacements uh, just in case. These are also just little cheap micro switch buttons. They're really cheap. Um, you know, they cost about two RMB or so for one of these, I think it is, for one button, maybe a little more. But you know, like I said, altogether, everything you see here, including the box, and I didn't make the box myself, I got the box from them. I did some modifications to the box. But it came pre-drilled with all the holes for everything, so you know it was basically just an assembly job. You know, wiring and assembly, kind of uh, putting it together. Everything you see here uh, was just under 700 RMB, so 698 or something. Uh, so it's definitely worthwhile. It's a, it's fun if you are like me, someone who grew up in the 80s and the 90s. You've probably always fantasized about having a uh, an arcade machine in your house and well you know I finally do have one uh, here's a manual that came comes with the Pandora's box thing which has a very convenient sort of uh, wiring diagram it tells you what each wire on the jammer connector is just in case you are confused okay well let's stop messing around with the internals let's plug this bugger in and see exactly what it's like to play Okay, when you boot this thing up, it basically goes into this menu, as you can see, it's all in Chinese, but, you know, it's very, very easy to see. I have a games list, which I downloaded off the internet in English, it tells you all of the games that, that are on here. You can actually go through them page by page. And, like I said, there are 200 and, uh, sorry, 520 um, games, including all my you know, old favorites from when I was young, you know, like Street Fighter 2 and uh, Cadillacs vs. Dinosaurs, Final Fight, all that nonsense. So, if you're familiar with arcade, or well, arcades in general, you've got everything here from the late 80s to the mid 90s and even the, the early to mid 2000s, in fact, all the way up to sort of 2005, 2006. Um, so, there's a, there's a huge amount to select from here. So, for instance, just Let's, uh, let's go to my my absolute favorite game of the lot, which is Last Blade 2. If I hit my coin button, that one in the middle, you can see it adds coins. Um, I can actually control the volume on that Pandora's box. It's got a little volume control, and you can plug in external speakers as well. Anyway, you boot up the game, and it runs absolutely pixel perfect, just like the arcade. Um, so here we are. Last Blade 2. Okay, skip all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see, there's no lag, there's no problem. Uh, it's exactly like playing in the arcade, which is nice. Anyway, um, if I press the start button and the coin button together, it actually exits me back out into, into the menu, which is great. Now there's another feature here, which is very interesting. I'm, I'm actually opening, you can't see me now, I'm opening it up. But there's a, a button on the Pandora's box unit itself. If I press that button, it uh, resets it into the settings mode, which will allow me to do things like test the I.O., you know, so you make sure all your buttons are, are working and are where you expect them to be, you know. Great, all works. Uh, you can also set how many coins, because, you know, these are actually used in the arcades here in China, so people actually do pay, pay money, right? And there are things here like if it should, you know, automatically exit or Hang on, let me turn this music down. It's very typical of uh, sort of Chinese uh, electronics. If they can shove a little bit of extra code in there, they do. So I'm sure you can hear this Miyazaki music that they've put in here, which is quite funny. Uh, anyway, you've got all sorts of things. You can set individual settings for each game as well. So there are things like you can set the amount of lives and how many tokens it takes etc etc so there's actually quite a lot to do um, let's see get out of there um, like I said I can actually understand what it's saying here and so for me I don't don't need the English version and uh, that one says save and exit that one says just exit without saving uh, but yeah that's that's really what I have built it's great fun it's a hell of a lot of fun at parties and uh, yeah it's just a, a fantastic little hobby so I hope that's answered everybody's questions. I will definitely put the link um, to the, um, the Taobao shop where I got this stuff from in the description. So if you want to buy one for yourself, well, you know, you'll know where to go to get it. Uh, just a warning, you know, although there are 520 games on here, it's actually more like seven. Because <laughs> if you know what arcade games are like, back during those days you've got basically fighting games you've got um, you know platformers uh, you've got scrolling beat-em-ups um, and you have you know uh, a couple of puzzle games it's got like Tetris and Pac-Man and that sort of nonsense on here as well but uh, rest assured it really works well everything is like I said pretty much pixel perfect arcade Yeah, there's, there's absolutely no slowdown, and it is as if you're in the arcade, which is awesome. Oh yeah, and by opening the box, I can actually jog that volume up and down. Anyway guys, um, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I, you know, I basically all my videos are about China and bikes and whatnot, but I am a little bit of a geek and I do enjoy messing around with electronics and computers and stuff too. So this is just another little fun project I, I sort of did on the side. So um, yeah, go get yourself one if that's the kind of thing you like. And uh, yeah, until next time guys, stay awesome.